So I just want to just quickly introduce the today's session and we want to see uh, uh, how far we can go into this session. And today's session is more about spiritual revolution, right? Evolution is something which is gradual. Revolution is something really drastic out of uh, uh, norm. If you actually see, sorry about that. <laughs> it's <a> going. <laughs> Jan is having fun. <laughs> That's how revolution starts. Like it starts going. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I have no idea. So when we resonate each other, it will it'll start going all over. <laughs> yeah. So today's session is more focused on the, the spiritual revolution when we want to take things to the little drastically, drastic change, right? <clears throat> and it may be life, lifestyle changes, or it may be ideological changes, or it is a whole... Uh, different way of looking at the things altogether, right? So especially <coughs> we have 8 billion people on the earth and 8 billion of us have 8 billion perspectives of the world because each one look at the world from their own story, right? Story being, uh, it is not just a script, but it is their own personal experiences, right? And uh, there was one nice documentary which I which I saw which really resonated with me when I started the spiritual journey. Uh, it was talk, It was about what the bleep do we know? <coughs> if you remember <laughs> the old <laughs> one, right? So in that, so one of the one of the scenes where uh, uh, it was talking about one of the native Indians who were there who were here. They were not able to recognize the ships coming until somebody else pointed it out, even though they were there on the, on the shore for a long time, because they could not relate to it at all together. So something which um, we can't even, I mean, physical things is one thing, but uh, uh, as a conscious beings, we, we have a perspective based on our experience of it, right? <clears throat> and that experience, if it is connected to one of the scene, one of the object, one of the person, one of the uh, behavioral patterns, right? So that scene connected to that experience and a similar scene or something related to that scene comes across our way, that resonates with us because of our own past experience, which is connected similar to that scene. Right? So each one have their own journey and each one is looking at the life, interacting with the world from a totally different point of view. So <clears throat> there are almost 8 billion stories that are playing right now. 8 billion theaters, literally, overlapping one another, right? There is a shared scene right now over the Zoom amongst 10 of us right now, right? And, uh, and after, a minute, uh, after a couple of hours, you will move on to a different scene. I move on to my own different scene. And our journeys intersect and then interwine uh, and then we'll come across and then move along. And each one walk away with different experience again, even though the same thing is happening at the at this place each one will walk out with different experience because each one of us are looking at or relating to what we are sharing to each other from our own personal perspective personal experience right <clears throat> and this way of living has been going on for a long period of time right and to some extent we start sharing and influencing your perspective. Each one is influencing somebody else's perspective and 
each one of us will start having a common consensus about oh this is good this is not so good this is okay oh this is terrible uh, well it is not that terrible for me and for somebody else it is it doesn't even matter right but each one of us give a different degree of it and we slowly start coming to a place where we can say that oh i understand where you come from i understand how you feel about this but i may not feel the same thing but i agree that this is how you feel about this right so agree to disagree right disagree means you're not disagreeing you're acknowledging i acknowledge this is how you feel but this is how i feel about it but i understand why you feel the way you feel and i understand why it does not influence me much more than how much you influencing you right so there is this collective wisdom which is start growing together that is helping us to coexist and that is helping us to even empathize with one another right if somebody else is going through a tough time we can empathize with them because we know what it feels because we can resonate with that experience within us then only we can resonate with them right and it is not always a uh, 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 reflective thing but it is also a way to pass on the collective wisdom forward to the next generation right so especially all the education system if you look at the big pictures what it's supposed to be it may or it may not have the the it may not be living up to the same intention but uh, the intention of every education is pass on the wisdom to the next generation so that they don't have to create their own start going to uh, creating their own uh, uh, wheel uh, reinventing the wheel and then <coughs> they don't have to go back to to the stone age right so so there is a collective wisdom they can quickly pass it on and then they can build upon it right and in the same way it is not always the the material concept that we are passing on we are also passing on the behavioral concepts right and we are also passing on uh, or we are tampering uh, it is by it 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 may or it may not be resonating but we may be giving a influence of what is nice what is good what needs to be aspired for right but after a point if we if the education is influencing more on the labels if the education is focused more on the tangibles we slowly start losing that connection of the real thing which is the experience part right we may be focusing more on the expression part of it but we may be missing out on the experience part of it or in other words we may be investing a lot of our time energy thought and and connections and relationships to to get to some destination and then we and the destination the target that we are working on might most likely be something physical for example uh, uh if if i have attributed happiness to get a promotion right and if you look at the uh, altruistically so you get into some profession of your liking and profession is nothing but you are you are putting your thought and energy 9 to 5 peak energy right into that profession and the profession is one form of service back to the community right and if you want to see if you want to grow next in your promotion which means that you want to do much more deeper or you want to go deeper in that uh, field of service or you want to impact more people or you want to bring more efficiency in that field of service efficiency meaning and again you want to reach out to the people you want to serve the people there is every service every goods and service is connected is related back to the service back to the community even it is education or is it is it or is it is governance or is it is private A any field that you take it is 
that field is meant to serve the community. Either it is retail industry or is it is a finance industry. Finance industry is actually supposed to facilitate or is it is a whole healthcare industry. The intention is to uplift the collective health of the community or take care of the health of the community. If you look at the big picture, why is that field existing, field of service existing to serve the community? Right? So if you actually see there is nothing wrong in aspiring to grow in that field of service, right? But if my intention, which is actually intention to be happy, intention to connect, and service is another version of love, right? You serve somebody because you love them. If you don't care, if, it, if, if that does not mean anything for you, why do you want to invest your time and energy into that? right? Anything that we are trying to do, it is an act of love, right? Every action that we are trying to do in this field of action is an act of love, right? But as we start growing through, as the collective wisdom is getting passed on, we might have attributed happiness to certain milestones, right? And even the social status is nothing but one who has a bigger influence on the community. Or in other words, one who has more love for the community, right? One who can give more love to the community or inspire love in the, in the community, right? So that is the higher position, so now if you actually see, right? And that is a position of influence. So if you actually see, everything started with a very pure intention whole universe started with a pure intention. It is, an, it is an act of love, how the world is going, actually. So this lo love is what makes the world move, in fact. But as we start going forward, when we start attributing that act of love is this, and we forget about love itself, and then we, our attention is moving on action, 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 or goals, 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 then we miss out on the real thing. So real intention of coming on this earth, real purpose of our existence is totally missed out. The real purpose of our existence is to be happy, to be loving, to love and be loved, right? To, to have that joy, that pure, genuine joy, right? And, and that experience will never make your mind think um, it will never make your mind go back in the past or go back, go forward, leap forward in the future. Either. When I am in that moment of pure peace and pure joy, right? So give me one minute and see. So as we start going through this journey, what happens is it starts going in two different tracks as if we separate. So sometimes uh, maybe this is another controversial thing, you know? So in the modern community, we have church and um, law and uh, law and the justice is separate, court and the church is separated. In other words, um, try to see what is the intention of church? To inspire love, to inspire compassion and all other stuff. If you see, if the court, court means like execution and making things happen, right? Finance industry, econo economy, or governance of the community, healthcare, or the services, ser service world. If you remove love out of that field, what will happen to that field, right? If you separate church and court, uh, it, it is not a right terms, but uh, if you take love out of the service field, it just dry after a point, right? And if you actually see a lot of people are going through that motions where they're just doing, 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 and they're reaching their own targets. And I recently, because recently we just had Olympics and all other stuff. So <laughs> I was seeing one of the uh, athlete Oh, she got straight uh, golds, gold medals in Olympics. And, and then I saw one of her video that 
she's really upset. And, and what she was sharing is, look, I was not respected for who I am because I'm fair and I'm mi mixed uh, uh, race. So uh, people don't respect me that much and all of this stuff. And then she was deep down, she was hurt. Even in spite after she got her gold medal in Olympics, right? So even though she achieved the highest, right? And that happiness didn't last even for a couple of weeks. <laughs> then I realized that like, what is happening? Everyone is reaching the highest goals, but even those who reach their highest summits are not happy because what we are craving for is real love, right? So, and that is where when I, once I start changing my perspective, of course, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what, you, what, what needs to be uh, done to take care of your body, to take care of your physical existence. That has to be done. But at the same time, more than that, what is priority is your well-being. Like, I should be happy. Whoever I'm interacting with, that, that interaction should be genuinely happy. And it should take me to the next level. Right? <clears throat> so if you bring it back, to our genuine existence on earth, right? Or it, in other words, the purpose of our existence, right? If I start leading a pure life, pure is an overloaded term, right? Authentic life, genuine life. Because of so much happened in my past, all of that collective is piled up on my consciousness. And that is tampering my vision of the world, right? And even though I'm inspired with this, I'm not moving forward, right? So when, when this thing starts happening, then there is a problem, right? So I just want to quickly show some of the visuals, uh, just so that, uh, just to give some visual. Can you see the screen? Yeah. So how our, how our heads, our experience is based on what is occupying my mind, right? Our minds are occupied with what's happening in the present life, right? But also there is this machinery which is built behind it, right? So there is this uh, gears that are moving inside that is making different uh, train of thoughts, right? And train of thoughts trigger uh, uh, a version of emotions which is coming based on the train of thoughts. And what is creating the train of thoughts is some some system that we have, the, some gears that have been uh, set, something in motion, right? Something is set on a motion in a particular direction, right? Uh, and that motion is what is influencing my mind to think in a certain way. So once it starts thinking in a certain way, based on those thoughts, all the emotion, all the experiences connected to that thought will start coming up alive in the mind space. And then that mind space is filled or colored with all of that emotions. And that colors the way I see the world, right? So in other words, just to reiterate, so whole of our life is science and childhood and our parents, our relations, our hobbies, our inter interests and our uh, passions, all of that thing is filled in our consciousness just to uh, you so and when we interact with other people they have their own things going on in their head and there is lo lots more is going on in our consciousness when two people are interacting so it is so much tampered right so when i'm expressing something i don't i don't expect that the same feeling is is experienced on the other side. Whatever I'm expressing is what is 
is experienced on the other side because they have gone through their own journey, right? So what I really want, what they really want is totally tampered with so much going on, right? So, so this is the current state. So how can I make it better, right? So there are different masks that I keep wearing. So I need to first start peeling off those masks. Once I start peeling off those masks, then I will have a whole new state of awareness, right? So <clears throat> once I peel off this facade, behind that, when we are talking about facade, it is not just about thoughts. It is the whole awareness that comes with that thought. Right? So say, for example, if you look at this, if your mind is occupied with only this, only this visual or anything connected to this visual, right? your life may feel like stuck. It may be boring. And just imagine you accept what it is and then you learn to step back. And once you step back, then you start seeing that, oh, look, it is a crown of a chicken <clears throat> or a hen, right? So once you step back, then you can say like, oh, okay, now I can make sense. What is that uh, blob of red color means, right? And now if you just uh, see uh, the hen, then you say like, what is, okay, so what about it? So you need to get the context of this hen. Then you step back and then you see that, oh, chicken is on the, on the wall <clears throat> and you'll see that oh children are looking at the at that hen right and then as you step back and then you can see that oh it is not just chicken there is more to this scene there are people around there are kids around there is this beautiful house there is this blue uh, sky out there right and then as you start stepping back then you'll see there is a whole environment connected to that scene right and then as you start zooming out Right? So what you're trying to do is you're not denying what is there, but you're finding a place for it and then you're stepping back from it in the context of the bigger picture. So that, that hen is still there, that kids are still there, and that house is also still there, but there is a lot more than that hen and, chick, uh, and, the, and the kids. Right? So as you start stepping back and then you'll see that, oh, it's all the game that is happening. It is the kids uh, and some other kid is playing the game. And then as you step back and you're like, oh, it is a, it's a cover sheet of a magazine, right? And then this cover sheet, all of this drama is happening on, on that cover sheet, right? If my mind is just stuck in that visual, I'm totally oblivious of what else is going on in reality. So the way, the, the way to step into my pure presence is <clears throat> by stepping back. And the way to step back is not denying or is not suppressing, is by accepting and acknowledging, right? Once I accept, acknowledge, and I may even need a little faith because unless I step back, I don't see the context of what it is. Context of that, situ that incident with respect to the big picture. So in order to see the big picture, I need to accept, I need to have a faith that there is more to this, right? So that is a starting step. The minute I start doing that, so then I learn how to put, ha, uh, have patience and then step back and then start looking at the bigger picture. So as I start zooming out, zooming out, I can see there is a lot more going on, a lot more going on, right? So, so what is this got to do with the initial picture? Like, we look at the world, our relationships, how we interact with others, it is colored with so many colors that is happening. Sometimes some scene is so predominant or sometimes even some words, you said this. Right? They might have said million or billions of words, billions of words have been exchanged between you and that person, but one word gets stuck in your head and then say, you said this. You said this on that day. And then that one word fills up your mind. And every anytime you look at that person, boom, everything comes alive. And then you see that person with only that emotion that flared in your, in your head and heart when that incident happened. But millions of other incidents happened between you and, other, uh, you and that person. 
but all of that becomes dissolved right so so if i start learning to recognize first i need to be mindful that what's going on in my mind so once i observe what is going on in my mind it is a force by itself right so when my mind is preoccupied with some person or some situation or my own health or my own future or some something that uh, didn't happen it is preoccupied it comes with that payload it comes with that baggage and that baggage is an emotion it is not a statement it is not even a scene it is not even a word because over a period of time with many people if starts happening again and again it becomes just a heavy feeling right and when that heavy feeling is there it will hold you back heavily so now when we are talking about spirituality i need to learn to step back from that heavy emotion right if you look at depression when when people are talking about mental illnesses and uh, um, and depression and things like that what is creating that state of mind w- what is that force that is holding them back they have all the wisdom like why they are thinking the way they are thinking what they should be doing what is right what happened how should they be thinking all that wisdom all that information may be there tricks and trips uh, techniques may be there but some other force is working right so now the force that is working is this emotion it is a whole energy which is filling our awareness so more i learn to put that emotion in with pers- in perspective with the physical scene and then don't deny it leave it there and then learn to step back from that emotion right so as i start stepping back and i i start seeing the bigger picture and bigger picture and bigger picture right so you know other visual that comes to my mind especially when we are doing that practice right switching from one state of awareness to another state of awareness it is uh, something like you know monkey bars you know so you are hanging on to one thing you have to jump to the other one right and then you have to let go of it when you are jumping in between you are in the air <laughs> right so you have to use that strength to pull yourself forward into another state of awareness and let go of this so then you slowly start moving forward right so so that monkey bar is the support that will hold your whole weight and in this in this situation our weight is our, our awareness right i have to pull my awareness out of that emotional state and then i have to put myself into a, to a higher awareness i can only step higher only when i can see the next bar right first i need to able to see the next bar and then i need to push propel myself and then hold on to that awareness and then let go of this this bar whichever i am holding on to so in other words how do we do when we how do we do this when we are meditating when we are meditating we start getting some framework some some concept of like i the soul am eternal right so i the soul my true nature is peace love and happiness that is my natural nature right so once i start understanding this thing but when i observe myself i observe my mind i don't feel peaceful i feel heavy i understand all of this concept but now i need to move from this state of mind to that state of mind so it is just a concept i need to create that mind set i need to create that framework and that is where visualization comes into picture so when i start visualizing how does it feel when i go beyond all of this thing right so more i start going further and further and further and further and further away as i start going further i can see that whole space and all that happened in that space i can leave that there and visuals are very powerful just by um mentally 
raising our awareness L- literally visualize yourself stepping away from that place and then uh, uh, you know there is a, this statement out of sight is out of mind right when we say out of sight out of mind is it is not true for this physical eyes physical sight but even out of sight of your mind right when i take the sight of my mind higher and then i can see the whole earth right or or just imagine if i can see i can put myself right uh, in in that state of mind where i can raise above this whole san francisco and whole of this bay area and i can from that point of view and start looking down oh there is the center that is where i live that is where i work that is that is where i do my workouts and that is where are my friends and family and then from a distance i can put all people all that scenes whatever i had there and i can prepare my mind to leave the emotions connected to to that place there right and visually i can as if you are clearing up your mind space and putting all this emotional uh associations back to that earth and then as you start raising above you can see that all that happened is only that much and there is a lot more there is a lot of open space and that that is where i can extend my mind's awareness into this open space right and that is when when i engage my mind what happened beyond that? how did it felt when i was not on this earth altogether right so more i start going further and further away from this earth so then it will it will take my mind to a different uh, it will it will gracefully pull my head and heart out of this worldly experiences and worldly emotions and it will put me into that state when nothing ever happened to me right so just imagine as i start going further and further and further and further away and all that happened to whole of humanity is happened on the tiny dot right so all happened on the tiny dot whole cultures civilizations rise and fall of kingdoms even the golden age heaven on earth everything happened on the tiny earth right and initially before i start thinking about this heavenly experiences i put even that to rest right once i start going beyond further and further and further away it will take me out of this earth in other words it may take me out of the time also altogether right literally science also talks a little bit about space and and uh, time are interrelated further you go away from it the time starts slowing down to such an extent that you go beyond the influence of the time itself i mean that is the science part it is still using the physical references but if you take the same context to our consciousness more i take my head and heart out of this earthly emotions it will take me into that deep silence and that will start giving a all together different experience which we can never get as long as we are in this physical awareness no matter what even if you are thinking about the best possible life ever happened on this earth even for for some of us who follow brahma kumaris for even the life of uh, lakshmi and narayan even if you thinking about lakshmi and narayan will not help you to grow further in your spiritual practice until you step all together out of this earthly emotions until we reset until we clean a whole of our consciousness until then even if you are thinking about because there is heaven is so much talked about in every religion every culture heaven is so much there right there is a whole deep description of each and everything but no matter how much you think about it it may feel good but it will not make difference in your personal consciousness right so the key here is i need to go beyond all of this because even if i am thinking about lakshmi and narayan my present state of uh, consciousness is tampered by all of other experiences 
I cannot deny what I have experienced. I cannot just say past is past. Or it is like suppressing or denying. And deep down in your consciousness, you know that you are faking to yourself. And it will not go any further. It will just make things worse. So first, I need to totally reset who I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm not my experiences altogether. I'm not even the experiences that I had even in golden age. It is just an experience. Even the experience in golden age, or experience of Lakshmi and Narayan are also transient because they are not permanent. They are also going to change. Unless I start experiencing what it feels to be me genuinely, nothing is going to make a difference. It is like adding another layer of like 80, 84 births of layers of coating. It is another sugar coating that we are going to add on. It will not make much dent in the shift of our consciousness until I re-experience what it feels to be me genuinely beyond any earthly experiences, how it feels to be me. Right? So then I totally cleanse all my consciousness and that pure consciousness, that revolution, that revolutionizes whole of your inner world. Yeah, there will be a whole new rebel that will stand up in your inner world and you'll start cleansing up all of your past emotions, traumas, phobias, and deepest fears of all 63 births, thousands of years, centuries together, any, so many positions that you have played, so many roles that you have played, so many relation, deep relationships that we have, all the traumas that you have gone through all of that will start getting cleansed up until I experience my true genuine self, my pure self as I am. Until then, I cannot bring the revolution, right? So that's when the spiritual revolution starts happening. And from that perspective, I start relating to their other beings beyond their stories beyond their drama, beyond their karma. I will be genuinely interacting with other beings, who they really are. And I deep down in my consciousness, I know I'm genuinely interacting with the real soul, right? And that interaction will really revolutionize the way others start thinking about themselves the way others start perceiving the whole world, right? So then it will start um, catching fire. It will be cascading. It, so your consciousness will start influencing others way, uh, the others on how they start looking at themselves, how they start looking at the whole world, how they start looking at their own past, what happening in their own personal life, right? And it, it not only influences but it also inspires them and empowers them because the very minute they start interacting with you they start feeling something deep inside that very experience of pure sense of self itself is a power by itself right the minute they start realizing the realization only happens only when they experience and once they start experiencing, they all, all already start empowering themselves. The minute they sense some sense of power, if they continue to latch on to that uh, uh, stable state of awareness, they start growing. And any interaction that they have, it comes from any interaction that is coming from that pure state of mind will not go in vain. It will always make a dent in whoever they are interacting. If, even if there is nobody there around, they will be influencing the five elements. Literally, they'll be influencing the five elements. And that's how the whole revolution starts happening. And especially, I always uh, used to think, like a lot of you have taken the course, so uh, one of the things that always 
puzzled me initially when I came is like, see, it took almost 5,000 years or 4,900 uh, 900 years to get come down the ladder. Within this 100 years, the whole world, whole extreme hell has to become a extreme heaven on earth. So the scale does not line up. In order for that to happen, it cannot be a, a gradual evolution of consciousness. It has to be a revolution. There has to be a drastic switch in the consciousness, right? So if you see the transition, even Baba says that the transition of consciousness is just a matter of one second. It's all about waking up to that awareness. The minute you wake up to your true sense of who you are and what is your relationship with others, and then you start experiencing the genuine joy, genuine love in that spiritual interaction, spiritual relationship, it takes you to the next level. And of course, uh, the one who is never tampered, one who is never tampered by the limited consciousness, when you interact with that being, what you're going to experience is always pure, right? If you remember the, the first picture, in this, there are two people interacting. Just imagine the other person never have any drama going on. It is a pure being. Their consciousness is very clean and clear, right? And then you open up your heart and you get to interact with something pure and genuine straight away. You get to experience something pure and genuine, right? Whereas any relationship in this physical world, you're interacting with their state of mind, which is already tampered, right? And just imagine you're interacting with something which is pure, eternally pure and never tampered by anything limited. It will always see you in your, in, in your eternal awareness. So every time you interact with that being, it always invokes your eternal self. And that being who is always, uh, jump to that screen. So that being who is always beyond this physical limitation, right? Any interaction that you have with that being, and that interaction will only with the soul, not with the role that you have, and not with the drama that happened with you. That being will only interact with you, the pure, part within you, right? So, and in other words, if I genuinely want to experience the real sense of love, I have to stay in my pure sense of self. Then only I can really experience or connect to that being, right? It is mutual, right? So, but on the other side, the doors are fully open. It is all in my hands. As much effort I make, to take my state of mind, my awareness beyond these physical layers, that much I can experience that pure love, right? And that's why sometimes when I re uh, hear in the uh, some spiritual gatherings, the purpose of life is to realize God. So then I used to ask like, why do I want to realize God? Why do I want to meet God? In other words, the purpose of life is to experience love, true love, true, genuine love, right? And if I use some system which is designed within here, it will take me to only to that extent of awareness. If I can go beyond all of this drama altogether, then I naturally can relate to that being. So, so these are some of the thoughts I had, I wanted to share, um, let's see. Yeah, so just want to give a pause and then check in any thoughts, comments, questions. How can we bring that revolution? Yeah, Joanne? Well, that was very cool. That was, um, I, 
Yes, this, so many of the things that you said, I've had many thoughts on lately and even discussions uh, with others. And I've, um, like, as you know, this whole thing about the drama is driving me nuts lately. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> yes, yes. It's uh, providing, it's provoking um, more thought. And um, this, when you said, there was a few things that you said, I just went, oh yeah, right. Because they're all in line with the things that I'm thinking about. So you're talking about um, the real versus the false. Being caught in the false, thinking it's real, not realizing the real because you're caught in the false. But you really want the real. But <laughs> yeah. You really want everyone really wants the real. They just don't know how to get out of this real, the movie real, to get to the real. That's right. Yeah. Cool. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty it's frustrating <laughs> in a way being a human being when you said it takes one second that was something i read today about that last second is death so in a way like that last second uh let's say like in the story your last second is taking you from the end to the beginning in a split second mm. so this is all a second away switch yeah Mm. Yeah, it's very deep and um, and it makes sense that, of course, you want the you want that interaction with God. Who wants to be caught in this game down here? It really is very muddling. It's it's like playing in mud, and you just get dirty, and. Um, the cleanliness part you know who doesn't want to have a who doesn't want to be real i think everyone on the planet is aware of how unreal everything is and mm. really so to become real i mean this really is the key isn't it um how can you bring benefit if you're playing in the mud Mm -hmm. You'll just help dirty everybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, I often thought, you know, like when I started this, I, I was involved in doing teaching. It was the worst thing to, to put me into because I was so unreal and didn't even understand the knowledge. So, I mean, okay, so that's part of my drama. That's part of my film. That's, what I, that's what's going to happen. But it didn't help me grow. It just helped me become more egotistical. Mm -hmm. What was the point? Mm -hmm. And so all these years later, I'm realizing what is real. And um, I think you described it well. I actually have to really reconsider that question, who am I? See, well, another thing which really helped me is, you know, Dr. Prashant from uh, Cambridge. <clears throat> so the same, similar topic, right? Similar sense, like, oh, this is all illusion. This is all like drama and stuff. And just imagine your friend is having a very beautiful dream and he's sleeping and then he's having a good time in his sleep. And all of a sudden you pour a cold water on his face and then wake up, right? What do you think? Will, do you think he will be happy that you woking up, woke him up to the reality? He'll be really pissed off. <laughs> He's saying, I, I was having the best experience. I, have, I was having the best dream of my life. <laughs> you ruined the whole experience for me, <laughs> right? So, 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 so what I was taking away from that sharing was there is nothing wrong about whole of this drama and all other things. So we created our own dramas in a way, right? But but the but the key that you nicely pointed out is to to been there, done that. I tasted all of that thing. 
yeah, it's okay. It's nice to experience all of that. But now I want to go and experience the real thing now, right? So I have to make peace with whatever is going on around me. If I, if I am not going to make peace and if I put a, put a label that, oh, it is all drama, it is all illusion, it does not really ma it matters. No, it did matter to you. It did give a good experience at one point, right? And your deep inside, your consciousness will pull you back. It's like, you know what, you're fake. Right? You had a good time, don't you? You had a good time having, hanging out with, the, with these people, doing this, doing that. And then it's like, yeah, I had a good time. Maybe I should go for another vacation. You know? <laughs> you know? So, <clears throat> but I need to make peace. I need to make peace. Like I, I know, I understand what it is. Now I want to have something bigger, right? And that is why I like this visual. What uh, uh, we had is like you slowly start. I like it. I make peace with you, and then you go bigger, right? So when that thing comes back in your life, it is not going to take you away from the truth, right? Otherwise, you will be polarized, right? So you start going into something subtle, something um, not so tangible, right? And then it will take you only to a certain extent. And this force is really tangible and really forceful. It will pull you back into the mud again, right? So unless I make peace with my friends, my family, all the drama that I'm going through with my work, with my neighbors, with the dog which is barking in the neighbor, I need to make peace with everything. Right? Otherwise, even a small thing will pull my attention back into here. Right? So I slowly start raising big peace, make peace, and then you start growing bigger and more beautiful. And then what will happen is, as I raise higher, I am happy and content. And of course, physically, I'm still here, same neighbor, same dog barking, but the, the presence, that pleasantness which I bring into these interactions takes you to the next level. And then they start feeling something different and your relationship with the same physical world will be totally at a different level, right? So there is no two, two forces working. You made peace with, with, the, uh, with the physical and the limited forces, and then you're bringing spiritual into physical. So you're not totally blanking out on this physical existence, right? You're bringing spiritual into physical. And then, then that's how we bring heaven on earth, right? Heaven is on this earth. Heaven is not there in that la-la land, right? So we bring that spiritual consciousness into physical so that we bring heaven on earth. So, yeah. So I have a question. Um, so this is all about everything being pre-recorded. You, you didn't talk about it. But can, mm, I, can I introduce this idea about each one's recording is already done? Mm, mm. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. right? Everyone has their very own recording. And that's why everyone, and it explains why everyone, there's 8 billion different opinions on yeah. everything, right? Mm. Because everyone's recording is very specific. Now, I got, I, I would like clarification. Is that recording changeable? And if so, how? And how do I affect it? Mm. Yeah, definitely. See, see what I, I want to add uh, to the question, right? Especially when we talk about recordings, right? Mostly how we perceive the recording is the situations that they are going through is the people that they're interacting with. And especially when we say that, look, your drama is pre-recorded, it is destiny, right? So then what we, what indirectly we are saying is like, you are going to end up with this person 5,000 years again, <laughs> you're stuck with this thing, this role forever, right? So, but when we say part recording as the sequence of events or sequence of uh, uh, painful experiences, I want to um, broaden up the definition of the recording, right? So, especially when I was uh, uh, thinking about, you know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Helen Kelly. I think she's the one uh, uh, 
uh, who Helen Keller. H Helen Keller, right, right. So she she has all kinds of disabilities, but she made the best out of it. And especially coming back to the present time, this Paralympics that is happening right now, right. <laughs> so when you look at that, right. So one of the inspiration thing was uh, who is that the the swimmer from U.S. team, right. Uh, she's a sergeant from U.S. military, right. So so she was swimming through that, right. If you look at the scene, or the choir, just put yourself in her shoes on the pedestal, achieving the gold medal for whole of America, right? And she, her tears were rolling down her e uh, her eyes, especially when the national anthem was playing. She was moved, literally moved. She literally melted when the national anthem was playing. So put yourself in her shoes, what she was experiencing, right? And if you look at the conditions, she might have gone in some war or something, right? And she might have lost her, she got disabled, she lost her legs, right? And if you look at the scene, one scene is so painful that she, she, she sacrificed her life for the country and for some of the people, some of the uh, veterans who served in Afghanistan, they see like, oh, I, I gave my life and then look what had happened. Or I mean, different people have different opinions about it. But if I start thinking in that way, I lost my legs, I lost everything. But whatever has happened is one of the stepping stones that led to this experience, what she had on the pedestal receiving the gold medal especially when she was listening to the national anthem, right? So if you break it down, the whole story into one scene at a time, it may look painful, right? And that is why this uh, slides always helps me, right? I got to see that, accept it, then only I can see the big picture, then I can appreciate why this incident happened, right? So where I'm going with this whole part about predestined role that is recorded is what I really want to experience, right? And what I really want to experience, there is certain incidents has to happen for me to get to that experience. Just imagine if my experience is to get that moving experience that I represent the nation, I took the whole nation higher up and I achieved, I put my whole community, I made the whole community proud of what I did and the whole nation proud in that matter. And that experience is what I want to get, right? So then I might have to go through all other previous steps, right? So in other words, putting scenes aside, sequence of events aside, if we just focus on what is that experience each one wants, that is predestined. What version of love I want to experience, what version of happiness I want to experience is predestined because it is, it is based on my capacity. How much love makes me happy, right? Just imagine if I have a bigger body, bigger frame, my stomach is a little bigger, I may need two plates full of food to fill my appetite, right? And if there is a, a smaller body, smaller stomach, and one plate is good enough, one bowl of soup is, fills their stomach, right? And is one with bigger body better than a smaller body? No, it is all up to their capacity. It is the experience that matters. Other person to get to the same state of experience, they need two bowls of soup, other person may need only one bowl of soup to get to the same state of joy and experience, right? So it, it, it again comes back to who am I, right? Even if you force feed the person who, whose appetite is only one bowl with another bowl, they will have a bloated stomach and they don't enjoy that, right? <laughs> They'll say that I'm happy with one bowl of soup. Even if 
everyone influenced them like you know what second ball of soap he is the best soap <laughs> if they if they sell that idea and if they force themselves to eat that and after eating they'll have a stomach ache right they will not have a best experience right so in other words who is defining the role i myself am defining my own role i am setting myself that i want to get this experience right and then i'm putting out to the universe hey set up the uh, action plan for me <laughs> so that i can get to that experience right so everyone has their capacity to which they they can experience love to they can experience joy some experience happiness in 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 adventure some experience happiness in 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 volunteering some experience happiness in just sitting with the nature right each one has different versions but is sitting with the nature better than and serving other people no it is apples and oranges you cannot compare those two <laughs> those two are two different experiences what is your appetite what is my appetite i will only know my appetite only when i know who i am if i put myself if i see myself with my limited actions or oh, when i went to ocean beach i had a good time and i identify myself with that experience that i had on the beach then i always seek for that beach experience but my appetite for, to experience is more than that experience that i got on the beach i want to go for a bike ride i want to go for a hike i want to do a lot more things and unless i do i don't know is that what i really want right so there are millions and billions of things i keep doing and i may not fully know who i am so the best way to know who i really am is gen gently step back step back and raise above all of this earthly experiences and you get to know your appetite and and start acting to fulfill that appetite which is beyond physical so then it will take you to the next level of experience and it is beautiful and it is going to uh, it is sustainable it is sustainable happiness it is sustainable love that goes for a long time right and then as you start living up to your true self you naturally start um bringing the attention of other people who you are interacting to what actually they should look for <laughs> you know i always like uh, steve jobs <laughs> you know when the first apple phone came he said like i'm going to sell this for 700 bucks or something like that in those days the phone was like 20 bucks 30 bucks right that flip phones right and then he says like what does this phone will do it will just play music who will play who will buy 600 who will pay 600 bucks to play music that is their idea but he said if this is what i want to do there are people like me who who likes to do think crazy things like this those are the people i am going to target <laughs> you follow so you got to live up to your own passion and then you influence others and then your passion will start catching up to catching up and you're inspiring them to live up to your passion <laughs> don't get stuck in that blue collar <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it is very interesting how the service world is all about right service is all about like live up to yourself and then you make a lot of difference in the world <laughs> there are a lot of difference in many people's lives right mm -hmm. so so any other thoughts comments i want to comment something that i yeah. learned from i think one of the lectures with sukanya with sister sukanya which helped me a lot and then i shared it myself with my own little audience and it was about on the same line of this class it was about uh aligning with that which is permanent versus aligning with that which is impermanent and that was like a very binary simple way of returning to center if this is this um conversation permanent or impermanent is this role permanent or impermanent 
is this desire for manner. And so the, it just helps discern and kind of strip away and go really quickly to what's valuable. And I find that very centering, very stabilizing, even in the most overwhelming of circumstances. When you ask yourself that question, it kind of resets you very quickly. Mm, that, that is really true. Nice, Romina. So I just want to add to what Romina just said. So most of the time, um, there is this concept in uh, Hindu culture, uh, the concept of neti neti, neither this, neither that, right? It is about uh, uh, this is not real, that is not real, this is transient, this is impermanent, this is material, right? So the, the words that they use is neti neti, neither this, neither that, neither this, neither that. They keep going away, away. And then pretty soon you'll go into emptiness. So, so, so one of the things I fig, I, uh, for me, what worked for me, I realized like that makes sense. That approach will make sense, but um, it is not working somehow. So I was thinking like, what is it that is missing piece, right? If, if you take away everything that is not you, or if you take away all that experiences, which is not permanent, you should naturally step into who you are, and that is eternal. Logically, it makes sense, but somehow it is not working for me. So then I realized, especially in Brahma Kumaris, the practice that we stole here is remember. It never said that, uh, uh, what you call it, it's not a rosary, it is not a chanting, it is not a reading of the scriptures again and again and again, but it, the word used is remember. I, I, I never heard this word in any other gathering as an approach to get into that eternal awareness. And remembrance always, when you remember your childhood, you're not just remembering the places you've been, you, along with that places that you're remembering, you're also remembering the experience that you had. When you're remembering your childhood days with your mom, you're remembering how it felt to be with your mom in, in your childhood. So what actually you're remembering is you're remembering that feeling, right? So the, the, the thing that worked for me is feel your way into your permanent. Step away from this uh, perishable emotions and start stabilizing. How does it feel when I take away this pain away from my heart? When I start taking this thorn out of my heart, how does it feel? I slowly start taking all the pain points. How does it feel? And it will naturally take you back to the childhood days, this pure in a sense. And that naturally, you, 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 you're not creating another, you're not doing another exercise to experience. The very first minute you start your meditation, you start feeling your way into that place. So the minute you start feeling, that itself will start giving you power. Right? Once you start feeling good, you can stay there longer. And that is sustainable. Right? And again, uh, going beyond labels and going into the experience. I really like that. Uh, one of the brother, uh, I think, uh, brother James Lee, uh, he used to tell that. <laughs> he used to tell, go beyond the labels, <laughs> go into the experience of it. <laughs> Just imagine everything that we are talking about. If I can tell all of that, what I said, without using a single word, what language I was using then and start speaking that language. And that will be beautiful. Just imagine every word I'm using, instead of using a word, I'm using the energy behind that word. What really it means. I'm just putting out that energy out constantly. What language will that be? It is a language of silence but it is not a language of emptiness. It is a language packed with 
heavy, pure energy, right? And trying to go beyond labels, going to that state of mind, it will be very beautiful. There is something, another thing that uh, always helped me to, to stir up the pot, <laughs> you know? We, we, we have to do something drastic change. So you have to totally go into silence. Silence means strip off the words and stay with the feelings behind it, right? And, and especially the thoughts are again, it is, a, it is a statement in other words. Even if it is not verbally spoken, even if there is a silence of your mouth, but if I can stop talking in my head, right? And then start creating this pure thoughts, thoughts about eternal self. And even those thoughts, say for example, I am a soul, I am a pure soul. It's a clear statement. I may not be using in my verbally, but in my mind, I may be saying I'm a pure soul. And after that statement, dissolve that words into an energy and just hold that energy in your mind. And that's how you slowly start bringing silence into your mind, but it is a pure silence. It is ignited silence. Right? It ignites, that pure thought ignites that pure awareness inside. And that energy, if you can hold on to, if you, if you can fill the bowl of your mind with that pure energy as a pure soul, as a pure loving being, that's it. It is just an energy. After a point, no words, just energy. It's a pure energy, right? And it naturally can pull you out of all of this. So we got to do something drastic like that. <laughs> cool. Okay. So anyone else have any thoughts, comments? I see Dennis Ben, Vinod Bai, Peter. Yeah, Vinod Bai. I Oh, your mic is not on. I can't even see your mic, Vinod Bhai. Sister Denise, you want to say something? I think you're talking about Raja Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I'm, I was thinking that you earlier you were talking about, um, uh, you know, going to that place of your own capacity to feel, you know, whether it's in the forest or, but in Raj Yoga, we're, it, it, we're given, there's some, there's an external force that's saying, you can go more than what you're, what you've experienced, right? Yeah. So it's the, like going it's beyond, go beyond your capacity or what you think your capacity was. So we all have a capacity, but um, so that's that's why this is kind of interesting. <laughs> mm. yeah, anyway, those are just some thoughts I was thinking of, actually thinking about the law of entropy, and I couldn't think of the word. You know, when an external force comes in, it, it, everything goes to entropy unless an an external force changes that. But I can't remember what the actual um, line is i can't think of the exact word but um, anyways yeah so something from outside this closed system has to to reignite <laughs> to stir up the whole consciousness in the closed depleted system yeah and then it can come back to harmony and divine order and yeah god is that 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 force that power that intelligence that does that Anyway, mm -hmm. it's very interesting what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, Raj Yoga is really <laughs> still <laughs> our thoughts. Yeah, it's always so you're, you're really trying to say go beyond the thoughts, go beyond the labels, go into the experience, go into the energy, go into the peace and add the love, feel the bliss. That's what you're really trying to say 
is it more partly right that's right and then bring it back into this physical it's not that this physical does not exist it's not that people does not live here right but these are also conscious being but once i step out and fill myself with that higher awareness and i bring that higher awareness back into this physical right so i am not denying the existence of the physical altogether right but i need to take a break step back from all of this physical step into that pure consciousness bring that pure consciousness back into physical because here this physical world is not all about physical because there are souls who are here for conscious being yeah. mm -hmm. they are not physical so i am going to interact with those people who are also spiritual they may not be aware they may not be awakened to their spiritual sense of self but they are who they are they are spiritual even though they are body conscious they are still conscious yeah <laughs> matter is not conscious matter is matter right matter is enabling the space and time dimension is enabling us to to interact to express this in the scenes are enabling us to propel that energy which is inside us to express it may come in words actions interactions it may even stir up our thoughts our emotions all of the stuff and all of this thing is happening inside our consciousness because of this physical drama if it if this physical drama didn't exist if there is no space and time there is no way that we could ever experience the beauty of consciousness altogether right and 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 the drama is beautiful and that is that is why brahmins come and want to live here for a long period of time right yeah <laughs> so 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 the the key here is take a break go back connect bring soul world back into this physical world and make this a soul world because these are souls who are here this is a soul world the people here these are all souls they are not matter they are not things they are conscious they have feelings they have thoughts they have emotions these are souls make this a soul world unless i am soul conscious and i am in in touch with that supreme spiritual energy i cannot bring that spiritual energy back into this world of souls i need to bring that soul world onto this physical world and yeah. make soul world and the truth is this is also a soul world these are all <laughs> right well what's amazing is that all these tiny little points of consciousness with the one supreme point of consciousness can change the whole universe of physical matter i mean that is that is amazing isn't it yeah tiny little tiny little dots of light transform the whole universe because the planet yeah. when when we come into alignment the planets come into alignment whole mass when there's a, when there's a critical atom. mass of enlightenment then the whole it's we that are doing that the yeah. souls that are doing that either one way or the other that's right, right. Yeah. I mean it's it's kind of amazing really. It's really amazing especially when baba says that you are the creators of matter yeah. and also the time. Just imagine time. You are the masters not only of the matter but also the time. In other words, you the conscious being can influence this matter and they're ready to respond to you and they are responding to us all the time. because our collective consciousness is all confused and stirred up and depleted and that is why elements are also depleted in a, in a way right all of this okay. climate change yeah. everything is mm -hmm. happening because the collective energy of the souls is depleted so it is just re reflecting whatever is there in the collective consciousness so when we souls get our act together mm -hmm. step up to our true presence we can influence the matter back to the powerful state 
and of course even the time is our creation especially when we are talking about the time baba is telling who created golden age the souls created golden age when we the souls become divine with full of divine divinity awakened self then the golden age happens we bring the golden age here yeah. so we are the creators of that right so and that is why i was telling that hey you guys got to get your acts together <laughs> right so we are the creators of the time the good times and also the bad times and also we are the creator of this physical awareness the state of the physical matter space and time both is our creation the soul's creation right yeah thanks for bringing up the time aspect because uh have a little little bit of a battle with time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i really like this idea i think this is uh, uh, i got this idea from uh, suraj bhai he said like you got to bring soul world here <laughs> and then i was churning on and i said like yeah all of these are souls this is the soul world too <laughs> but they are not conscious they are all materially conscious but they are still conscious something or the other they are conscious all we have to do is like awaken the spiritual aspect in the consciousness that's all it is make this a soul world realize this is also a soul mm-hmm. purity of that soul world that same purity if i can bring down on this physical earth then this heaven on earth you know there is this whole uh, 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 in science there is a uh, three uh, parallel universes that they call right the, all of the string theory is all about uh, uh, there are these parallel universes every time these two realms of awareness will collide there is this big bang that happens and then there is this black hole that is happening right the energy is coming from every time the exchange of energy is happening when there is a big bang and then energy is just going into that black hole where is it going it is going to the other realm right so they they have this version of uh, parallel universes but our version of parallel universe is like spiritual awareness when you bring that pure spiritual consciousness back into this physical consciousness you make a whole transformation happen here right so it is like parallel universes which are existing soul world is always there physical world is always there but the the energy exchange happens at every confluence age right and now is the time now is the time okay so so unless uh, peter you want to say anything oh so we are not able to hear <laughs> we can see you speaking but we cannot hear you i think there's a problem with the mic or sorry about that his his face speaks a thousand words that's true that's true <laughs> he's in, he's engaged he's he thinks he's very thoughtful and um i think that perhaps and of course i'm looking through my filters here sorry let me put my video on um this is elizabeth i'm talking to you from the laundry room <laughs> oh that's what i was saying where is she <laughs> yeah um anyway um i'm sorry we can't hear you uh peter but um your presence is definitely felt <laughs> he's still he's going to figure it out before the night is over <laughs> nope where are you, where about are you uh peter uh he's chatting Hi. he's typing in sorry sorry he's chatting He says his microphone isn't working. Yeah. Cool. Already so we are almost at the time, huh? Rajeshwari, you want to say anything? Any thoughts, comments, questions? Okay. So so let's take a couple of minutes to step into that spiritual realm right so make yourself very comfortable wherever you are
fully relax your body. Just observe your body. As you're relaxing every part of your body, your legs, your hands, with each breath, you're allowing this energy to naturally reach every corner of your body. I, the spiritual being, am housed in this temple. This body is the temple. I, the consciousness, reside in this temple. Gently bring your attention on yourself, the conscious being that living energy. And gently and gracefully pull your heart out of this earthly experiences, just observe. As if you're stepping out of this earth, leave all your earthly emotions, experiences on that earth. and gracefully step into this pure silence, a very peaceful, pleasant silence. Give enough time and attention As you gracefully bring your mind, bring your heart beyond the space and time, beyond past, beyond future, beyond time. in this pure, loving presence. Step into that awareness, which is beyond conditionings of this earth. Step into that loving experience. Feel that unconditional love filling your heart. Filling your mind, filling your awareness. Feel your presence. Just stay in this love, light, and stillness. Love.
love in your heart. Lightness in your awareness. that peaceful stillness in your mind. Stay absorbed in this loving presence. Hold this loving awareness in your mind as you gently step back in this temple of this body, radiating that light, radiating that love, and staying in that stillness, a stable presence in this physical world. Extending this love, light, and this pure peace into this world. Extending this love and light to every soul on this earth, to every being. Awakening the souls. making this world a pure soul world. Bringing this spiritual revolution in this collective consciousness a spiritual consciousness. Extend your love and light. Extend this light. on this vehicle of your awareness, reaching every heart and soul. Extending into all five elements, into this earth, water, fire, air, either bringing heaven on earth om shah Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti.